every tennis player dreams of winning a Grand Slam and becoming number one in the world. Does a player deserve the number one ranking without winning a slam? To discuss, here are Ian Eagle and the editors from Tennis.com. Being number one in the world, it's the goal of any tennis player, but being number one doesn't always translate to success at the Grand Slams. Women's game right now. You can be number one without a Grand Slam title. Is this good or bad for the sport? I think it's, it's bad for the sport. It, it, um there's the legitimacy of the number one ranking. You'd like to think that that person is actually the best tennis player in the world. But that hasn't been the case uh, a few times in, in women's tennis recently. Denara Safina was number one. She never won a Grand Slam. Um, Carolyn Wozniacki coming up last year hadn't won a Grand Slam, uh, was number one. I think it's just, it, it, it's a matter, it's a little bit of a strange situation with the women. The best player, Serena Williams, doesn't play enough to make the number one ranking. They changed the ranking system a few years ago to reward people for playing WTA tournaments, which makes sense that WTA would do that. But um, it's left it open for people who play a lot of tennis, a lot of tournaments week by week, but not necessarily winning the biggest tournaments to, to become number one. I'd make a big distinction, though, in, 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 in this, because basically, look, the number one ranking really is a rating of a player's you know, consistency and performance over, over a set period of time. And if somebody gets to be number one, like a, like a Marcelo Rios did on a men's tour, because, because they accumulated enough points, that's sort of fine. To me, the big thing is when you have a year-end number one who, who, who did not you know, win a Grand Slam. That, that sort of makes you sit up and say, well, geez, how could they have been the best player in that year when they haven't won a major? And you've got other players who have won one, sometimes more than one major. That's really the killer in, in, you know, in my view. Yoni Yankovic is also another number one slamless, uh, but I, you know, I think we like to lump in Anna Ivanovic to that group as well of players, and she did win a Grand Slam and got to number one and tanked basically at it. So it's not as if you get to, you can be number one and you win a slam and you become this super player that you're expected, you know, you're uh, go down in history or whatever. Winning a slam, in my opinion, even to get to number one, it it doesn't define everything about the player. Um, partially because I, I think also that you know, we sort of put the number one ranking on a, on a significant level below the slams, you know, the media and everybody else, but... Hey, even the players, you know, you ask any of the players, the players never say, my goal is to be number one. My yeah, but becoming number one is not an easy task by any means. You can win a Grand Slam by winning seven matches. You can go, you can win a slew of matches over seven months and not get to number one. It's an achievement that I think is undermined a little bit. Underrated or? Underrated. Well, while being number one is certainly a goal and will always be a goal for players out on the tour, there's still something to be said for having that term Grand Slam champion follow your name. <laughs>